This episode is made possible by New Masters Academy, the world's absolute number one online art school in the entire universe. Click the link down below for a free seven day trial. Thank you, New Masters Academy. I am deep in the annals of your mind. I am deep in the annals of your. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Honey and Absinthe After Hours podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Vincent, a background designer for the Hollywood animation industry. And I'm Janet, the ex-Disney artist turned independent creator, and this is a podcast about all things art, business, and, and whatever, whatever we, we feel like. like. Now today, today we're going to talk about why Gen Z will become the forgotten generation. But before we get into it, make sure to like, subscribe, jingle all our bells and buttons, and also we have made a podcast channel. Go follow that podcast channel. Because we are going to be moving all our episodes to that channel, including new ones. Should probably make a button. Put this button up here. Click on the button. Get to the new podcast channel. And if you're listening on Spotify, don't worry about it. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we are going to uh, dun, 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 kill off this channel. Uh, kill well, this, off this podcast channel. This and put podcast it, on this channel. This kill off this podcast on this yes. yes. Kill, kill off this podcast on this channel. Yes. And we are going to move it to a different channel. So so that everything could be nice, neat, and cohesive. Well, like we've always wanted to, right? Yes. We'll we'll keep posting here for the next few episodes, but eventually we're gonna phase it out on this channel, move it to the podcast channel. So if you want to continue getting episodes every I'm gonna week. make it definitive. Three more episodes. And then we shift to the new channel. Okay. All right. All right. Three episodes, everybody. So, and it's all over. Find it on YouTube. Just type in Honey and Absinthe After Hours. Should be the first channel that pops up. We will see you there. But for now, we are going to talk about why Gen Z will become the forgotten generation. Yes. Highly, highly uh, uh, triggering topic, I'm sure, for a lot yes. of folks. And this will be a very, very triggering topic for every generation <laughs> that is still alive today. So enjoy the comment section, everyone. We're not going to be there, but we uh, we expect a bloodbath in the comment section. Yell at us. We expect. Uh, I expect they're going to yell at each other. <laughs> and us, I guess. And us, of course. But like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why are we talking about this, Jan? Well, we have saw this general sentiment on YouTube about Gen Z, and no one was really, like, ta like we don't feel like it's important to talk about these things, but then we're all noticing it, and it's, we're all kind of annoyed at Gen Z right now. <laughs> so We, we all championed Gen Z at first, yeah, remember? We had high hopes. We had high hopes. <laughs> we had high hopes. Um, so we, we've been seeing some videos, kind of sort of talking about this, and we wanted to mention our take on why Gen Z are really annoying and acting a fool right now. <laughs> um, it's a pretty good way to describe yes. what's happening. So you were watching this video. Okay, so I was watching a video by Dan Mural, right? So he's one of our favorite YouTube movie analysts. One of the I don't I don't know anybody else who does this, yes. but he is one of the people. I don't know how he does this, but he finds the numbers for how much movies make in the box office. And uh, I think two weekends ago, I, th I think at this point, three weeks ago, mm. where this, when this podcast was released, uh, there was this thing called Cinema Day that I, I assume all the movie theaters kind of created, made up just to get everyone hyped to go to the theater again. Yes. Um, and during the Cinema Day event, movies would be about like three bucks, like stupid cheap. Mm -hmm. um, all in an effort to get people used to going back to the theater again, mm -hmm. uh, especially during this dry spell of a season at this point. Yes. And uh, Dan t tells this story and he's sitting there watching Jaws in 3D, which is like his favorite movie, very good movie of all time. Of all time. Yeah. Uh, so this means a lot to him. So like imagine watching your favorite movie again in theaters and putting yourself in his shoes. And then he very politely, but I won't, I, Dan's a really good guy. A nice guy. Dan's a really nice guy. Yes. I'm not so nice. Yes. Um, so it seems as though, and I'm paraphrasing here, he gets really fucking annoyed yes. at, at these, these younger people. Mm -hmm. And then he, you know, he tries not to label them and he says like, you know, they're not all like this. And I, I, I agree, like not all Gen Z like kids are just the worst. Yeah. But I think by now, you, me, 
the people in our audience who are older than Gen Z mm -hmm. have a story yeah, of when you're yes. at a concert, yes. you're at a show, you're in line, <laughs> yes. or you're being served by a Gen Z. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, no what is going on? So Dan, um, apparently like there's like a troop of kids running up and down the stairs, <laughs> oh my God. talking to each other really loudly, probably on their phones, like fucking <laughs> doing all sorts of bullshit, you know? And like, you know, they're people, doing their best, apparently, he said. Like, they're really trying to shush them, like, trying to tell them to be quiet. But, you know, like, like in situations that you could recall, they just, like, keep doing it. Yeah. They just don't stop. And uh, it came to the point where Dan had to leave the theater mm. of his favorite movie in 3D. And, like, how often do you get to do that? Not very, very often, man. Um, so that's his story. And, like, uh, I, I think by now everybody has a story. <laughs> yes. So this is, like, the first video um we noticed someone was like venting about this thing that we definitely <laughs> experienced too and it's like man like when i listened to that story i was mad <laughs> for dan i was like fuming because yes. i like like people who love movies man like yeah. like it, it's, it's, it's we're not exaggerating it's it's church for us yeah. like don't you shut the fuck up we're trying to like enjoy this movie and and ease our suffering in life okay we're, we're like <laughs> in dan's case trying to relive the you know childhood, your youth yeah. and, and 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 appreciate uh his favorite art ever mm -hmm. whatever it's it's it, it just that's all i just that's all i wanted to say it just well, made me very very upset I know of a time when we were kids and like dumb kids would do that too. And I would see, this is how seriously we took the cinema and these people back then, um, adults, grown men, yelling at the kids, being like, hey, shut up. And then the kids being usually also boys, sometimes their girlfriends, whatever, they'd like, stand up. And like, the bro, like the, the, the masculine alpha male uh, thing, and being like, what, you told me to shut up? I'm gonna shut up. And then the older man stands up, clearly towering over the like, poor kid. You've been here before. And then, yeah. You've totally and been here like, <laughs> and, and I'm so sure, as like a little 16 year old, that like, I'm about to witness a fight go down, but then because it's like a, a man telling a kid to shut the fuck up that like the kid has to like back down <laughs> he's like I'm not i don't think i'm ready to get in a fight today um but that's how like our parents treated us okay like they like uh, like i'm surprised actually when he told me the story that someone in the theater didn't like just mess these kids up like i don't understand like what's happening well apparently uh you know dan talked to the the movie people and they were like sadly there's nothing we could do either because it's like like but like they were like it became a babysitting service like they like yeah. parents who didn't want a parent drop their fucking kids off at the movie theater and then what yeah i i, I feel bad for the movie people like no, yeah, like, that's not the responsibility fucking like take care of Asshole little kids, you know? But I also remember very vividly, if you're a kid and you're, like, on your phone or you're doing something in the theater, the, the security comes in and then they, like, do the, the flashlight thing at you and, like, they're like, come here. And then you're, you're the, you do the walk of shame. Yeah. And I'm just like, and then, what's and happening? Then sometimes the entire theater goes, ooh. Yeah. Or, like, they clap, yeah, actually. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. I've been there. I've been there. So been what there. is yeah. happening? Yeah, why, is that, why aren't these know, kids man. getting in trouble? I don't know, dude. Um... So, and then, so then we watched this other video. That was like the first instance. I was like, oh, maybe it's, it's just like, we all had that moment with these dumb Gen Z kids. And then <laughs> we, we saw this other video of this girl, Madison Brown. She um, is a, a musician who also does like music commentary um, analysis videos of the internet. Um, and so she made this video called Gen Z Get Some Decorum. And... Uh, I thought it was really interesting because she's talking about how Gen Z are kind of ruining concert going because for a lot of these artists, they're being extremely rude, like extremely, extremely, they have no respect for the artists. They, they, and they're, it's just not, not and like what they're doing is like really cruel basically um an example would be kanye was supposed to play at a concert he canceled he got replaced by kid cuddy so a lot of people in this concert were really mad 
that it was Kid Cudi playing instead of Kanye, and they started throwing bottles at him and, and, and booing him and stuff. But, like, you'd think this is just one occurrence. This was happening over and over and over again to different artists. So, for example, Mitski was playing in front of Harry Styles. She was the opener for Harry Styles. Um, she is only really known for her one song that went viral on TikTok, the nobody, nobody. She's kind of like an updated... Um, Yoko Ono. <laughs> Bjork. And Bjork, yeah. She, she does like more performance artsy uh, type of music. And they were, I think, also, they were being so disrespectful. You know how like people, <laughs> if you're aware of Gen Z humor, if they think you're hot, they'll go, Mommy! <laughs> it's so gross! Ah! I do not want people to call me mommy. That is some weird Oedipus stuff. <laughs> and I just... She, but they do not how to know how to act with this artist that they've they've only known online and apparently she has um she's very well endowed in the chest area and they'll like go like mommy let me sip on those milkers and i'm like oh my god like do not do not shout that at someone <laughs> oh while they're god. playing for you they said that yeah <laughs> so i was like no ew no and you have no shame <laughs> i'm just so I, I was like i've done a lot of awful <laughs> shit man <laughs> but i've never done that man <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but for the most part, they 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 won't like because they don't know her music. Th- other than that song, they'll like be on their phone and they won't like be actually like giving this artist any attention and be really talking over her through her entire set, everything. Um, and then other artists, I forgot. I sadly I forgot their name, but they're like um these basically alternative hip hop artists uh, playing in front of like. I don't know, Playboy, Playboy Cardi or something. Um, and they were, uh, it, it became a meme because someone posted that like no one went to her opener or something like that. No one actually knew who she was. And, and it became a meme to like pretend like you didn't know who she was. So like they, it would be a meme to pretend like you don't care. And, and you, in the hopes that you would be recorded in someone's TikTok that like, oh, look at all these kids who, who don't care about this. So it, it, it's not like they don't actually know who she is, though. They want their five seconds they want of fame. Their, yeah, and they want to be seen pretending like they don't care. Um, mm. So this is like this trend that is happening in the music performance in any entertainment, really, it's like from from movies to wherever you see kids, they're doing, they're acting really rude. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you have a story, because I'm sure you have a story, and I want dickheads, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where 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 like you just can't, you, you can't imagine the audacity. Sometimes I go like, I can't believe it. Yeah, you know, I can't believe and, it. And you think, oh well, like they're kids, like. We, like I said, I've definitely seen that behavior when I was younger from other people who were like showing off or, or, or trying to get attention or whatever. But what I think is more a, a more accurate way to describe why they are doing this is because they're, they're not necessarily doing it for attention. That's such a millennial thing to, to do things to get to to go viral to for the attention whatever they're doing it because they want community they're doing it because they're around other people who are doing it and in this like hive mind mentality they're like oh i want to be cool too so i'm gonna like throw bottles because i'm gonna get the social points in the moment it's not necessarily the like oh i'm gonna go viral someone's gonna post a video of me be acting bored it's that like other people I'm seeing at the concert will know that I get the meme. Mm. Will know that I I'm part of the in club, and it's because Gen Z has a serious problem with lack of identity. I think Gen Z, I I've noticed this thing where like they have a hard time caring and giving a shit about about things, and they they 
are desperately trying to find their identity right now, which is why they're going through a weird identity crisis with not everything from music to fashion to humor. So when you look at Gen Z fashion, what is it? It's it's everything from like the 70s and to like... Um, Stranger Things, the 80s. The 80s, yes. And uh, what was the other? Y2K. Mm. It's like they're going through grunge is coming soon coming back and scene it's just like their scene is coming yeah back. yeah That's gr- insane. It, it's grunge mixed with scene it's like both um and it's just like they're going through every single era trying to find themselves but instead of like just being in it like unique generation that that has their own identity um and so that that's fashion, music. I mean, they're just like all the music is now these days is just aping the seventies mu- era of music. Um, where, where and like a few years ago they were aping just like eighties with the Juno and everything. Um, Stranger, th- you think of the Stranger Things theme and, and like everything was about the eight, like. The synth. Synth yeah. came back in a big way. Right. Man, when we were growing up, synth was lame. Was yeah. Like you played guitar, you played like drums. Dubstep, yeah. Oh, or at least that, yeah. Yeah, dubstep, electronica, or um, actual is- instruments. Um, but then also humor. So, like, if you have not experienced Gen Z humor yet, um, you're probably old. Um, and you're not in that circle. Like, we actually aren't in that circle. I don't understand it at all. But Gen Z has. This absurdist humor. Uh, absurdist is an art movement. It's, there's an actual term for it. Like, people have been trying to describe Gen Z humor for the longest time. Is it original, Gen It's Jan? not original. Um, it's, it's called absurdist. And it, it's basically, like, the meme doesn't make sense. The joke purposefully is absurd. It does not. It literally is not funny. Um, and that's what makes it funny. And and the, the the term for it is absurdist, and it it's basically the original purpose of absurdism is is describing um, to remove the burden of reality from your shoulders. It's because you don't you, you are too burdened by reality, and like it, it pains you. So instead, you're just gonna participate in the absurd. Janet Chan, where did you get that line? From who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? And what is that? It's an absurdist play, and it was it, absur- the absurdist movement came out in the nineteen fifties to nineteen seventies, which is very interesting. That that time period, its significance is really interesting because that is Gen Xers, and who are they? The parents of gen z see it all it all like is starting to like connect with each other i'm sure it's still cloudy for some people elaborate elaborate we'll get there we'll get there we'll we'll explain more but it like goes deep and it like blows my mind the patterning it blows my mind that nobody has thought of this yet yeah yeah but um first though i want to share how to respond to Gen Z when they act this way. Because I feel like no one truly knows, except I think this Madison Brown girl actually knows. Like, her response to, like, because she, she got, as an artist herself, she got really upset. Like, this is, don't be mean just to be mean. Because you could see yourself in those positions. Because yeah. you want to be a, you want to you be on stage. Yeah. You don't want f- some people to fucking pretend they're asleep or playing yeah. fucking, what is you're that, dumb. City, City Rushers? Or, I'm so old. Yeah. <laughs> it's the app with the, Subway surfers, subway surfers. Yes, they're like playing subway. So yeah, they're these goddamn kids. When someone's performing, are playing subway surfers the this stupid game yeah. on their phone, and then getting themselves recording themselves at the show playing subway surfers and going like, I'm playing subway surfers on the show. It's <laughs> a lot of that shit going yeah. on. Like, you look stupid. You look dumb. Um, I think she knows how to respond to them. Because, like, us cusp millennials, we, we get your language, kind of. Um, and we know how to embarrass you. Okay. Let me and share then, a story. Let okay. me share a story. Okay. Let me share a story about my teachers in high school. Okay. I think I've mentioned I uh, was in an all-boys school, yes. um, a Catholic one. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, what that was like. Well, it was like, uh, I don't know, it was... A, <laughs> It was a lot of gallows humor and a lot of tomfoolery. 
A lot of that. Yes. A lot of that. Yes. Well, the gallows humor just... comes from not having any females around. <laughs> so everything just feels so bleak. But yes. you have like a dark sense of humor just, about it. Yeah, yeah. Imagine the weird gorilla shenanigans men, boys, will get into without females to keep them in check. Let me explain <laughs> one uh, horrific, another, uh, one, one specific horrific story. And I was a sophomore, okay? Shut the fuck up. Okay, I was a young kid. Okay. And I, I, <laughs> okay. So like we were all young kids. Okay. So like. Um, when we were sophomores in my school, there was this new teacher who I will not name, but he taught a certain science. Let's say chem chemistry. Let's say he taught chemistry. I don't. I really don't want to out him because this is really embarrassing. Okay. Um, and this, like, uh, we caught wind that this is like one of his first gigs as a teacher. As a te yeah. Like at this all boys school, and he's trying to get. And then we heard from the grapevine. I don't know how the fuck we, we heard this, but he was trying to get accreditation for to finish school. Mm. So this was like he needed to do this, um, whether you know, w no matter what happened. So like, he was like so nice. He came to work every day with like a shirt and and tie and glasses. Was always like clean shaven. He like drafted <laughs> us notes that that he projected on class and we were supposed to write them down so the class literally became us like sitting there and then as he would go from slide to slide we would go like we would write down what he wrote and then like when somebody was too slow which were a lot of people in my class <laughs> <laughs> we, they, we, we would go like out like they, we would like he would switch and then they would go oh, oh i'm not done yet and then <laughs> and then he would go oh, and then he would go oh, oh, oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and then you'd flip back and then, you know, being the asshole boys that we are, we smell fresh fish. <laughs> and then it just like, it goes, it goes, it goes downhill from there. Let's just say. And then we just really <laughs> just broke this guy. I, uh, I, I'll share one specific story. Okay. <laughs> there was, and this is, okay, this is like, we are fucking asshole 14, 50 year old boys. Yeah. Okay. So like we're in this science class and then he's having one of his moments because apparently during this time like he gets broken up with. Oh. And I don't know how be, how we know this, but like he, you, told, he, he probably told he, faculty yeah. or probably told some kid and some kid told some yeah, other he, kid. He, he told some kid. Which is... Yeah. Your you, friend said he told some kid and he was like, oh. I, don't, I don't know why he did that. Like as like a bro moment i guess i, don't I know. guess maybe just like a moment of like needing to talk to somebody <laughs> but like he was going through it yeah. and we could sense it and what did we do we made it worse yes. so he was like had it with it you know he came to he came to work and this is like semester two or three uh -huh. he came to work like the shirt like this like like uh, but unbuttoned yeah. on the top no tie no more tie yeah. um glasses he, he used to wear contact he just wears glasses and then um uh, he he was like not clean shaven anymore. <laughs> he would just come to class and then just like he wouldn't care if we couldn't finish notes and, and all that stuff. And, like he just had it with us. <laughs> and then like when we were, I forgot exactly what we were doing, but like we were acting like assholes. And then he was like, you know what? I'm tired with you. I'm tired with all of you <laughs> animals. And then my friend <laughs> goes up, stands on top of his desk and goes, are you calling me a monkey? And then everyone goes, Aah! and then like, like the whole fucking class goes on uproar. And then he goes like, oh no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. That's not. And then he fucking goes like, are you calling, are you calling me a monkey? And this is just fucking jokes. Cause like after this class, we're just like high-fiving and going like, dude, what the fuck? He's not actually offended. Just like the fucking kids who throw bottles at Kid Cudi. We're just trying to fucking like one up each other because there are no women in class keeping us in check, at, so we're just gonna go full ape shit, you know? So, so, so. Oh my god. That is an example. Um, but we broke him, yeah. and he was he was after um, after <laughs> this year he was no longer the same person, like, like truly. <laughs> the, the amount of stories and the amount of inappropriate stories that I know because of you and your friend sharing. Them. I'm and like, I'm sure oh, you could God. imagine the racial connotations. I'm not gonna be specific, but the you know about this story. Yes. I'm sure you could imagine. Different you know? times. Different yeah. times. Different times. And yeah. also, like Vincent always says, like he went to private school, not um, peasant school like me. But like Vincent's <laughs> private school was in LA. 
Okay, so it was like private schools full of like every minority you can think of. <laughs> Mostly like brown, browns, all browns, like barely any. They were like people. ten white dudes. Like no white at people my school and like no Asians. Out of all the out of all the high school, it, no it, like yeah, no was... Chinese. Korean, and like then when I went to when the school closed down and I went to a school in in, in the coast, Santa Monica, it was just like mostly white, yeah. and I was just like, was that like was a really culture shock. culture shock for me for sure. Um, <laughs> another teacher, in contrast to that teacher. Oh yes, okay, yes, it is yes, <laughs> my English teacher. Yes, who like I, it's so crazy how like. You know, everyone has a bad story about a math teacher. Yeah. But everybody has a great story English about teachers. an English teacher. There's always English teachers, man. Because they're like, pretend like they they majored in philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. So, um, my English teacher knew what Madison Brown knew. That like mm. all you have to do yes. in a tribe full of asshole boys <laughs> is to find the one who's most, you know, just you know, being the alpha. And you fucking embarrass the shit out of that person. You are going to you are going to be in control of this entire situation. It's sad. It's sad that us boys respond to shame and embarrassment like this. But it works yes. because we're all looking at each other at, as boys and trying to one up each other and what we can all the tomfoolery we could do <laughs> in a day. Um, but at the end of the day, we're trying to do it for acceptance. Yes. So if you subvert that, if we're like fucking with you and you somehow subvert that and fuck with us back, and instead of uh, me humiliating you, you humiliate me, that is a bad day for me. Yeah. That is a bad day for any boy yeah. <laughs> in an all boys school. The roast. Some of the roast. The you roast. Told me that you. It's were savage. It's, yeah. It's brutal. I cannot even say the things <laughs> that have been said because they've been a different time. <laughs> but, but it's it's still like like what Madison says. It, like it's it, this is all boys trying to trying to belong. <laughs> belong. Yes. 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 So the reason why I bring up like Gen Z is really into absurdist humor um, is because. It's different from Gen Xers, the like, we need a break from reality. They, Gen Z, grew up with being seen on the internet and, and they understand cancel culture better than any of us. And so they are not, they felt like they're not safe, safe from the internet, safe from each other. Um, because they're so overly concerned. They're the most self-conscious generation. The reason why they're doing all this at these concerts and stuff is because it's not actually for attention like us, like millennials. We're a bunch of narcissists. Um, uh, Gen Z actually just want to belong. They're, they're doing it for a completely different reason. Um, and they want the cool points of, of being in a group because they lack identity. They need it so, so badly. They need community so badly. So their, their absurdist humor comes from protecting themselves. If they do not care, if they pretend like they don't care, if they pretend like nothing makes sense, if they pretend like they weren't serious, they are protected from cancellation. They're protecting f themselves from um, being different, being made fun of. And, and so they, they adopt this absurdism. This throwing of the bottles, this like nothing matters, this like we like jokes that aren't funny. To protect themselves. To, really. Yeah, because they're actually very, very, very self conscious. So if you take away their incentive, you take away their social points, you take away that, and you, you do the exact opposite. Oh, you're throwing a bottle? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Like, you don't get mad at them. You just embarrass them in yeah. front of all of their friends. You, 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 that's the thing that they hate the most. Yeah. Embarrassment. Which is why they hate us the most. They, because we're so okay with, yeah. with embarrassment. Millennials are. We're a bunch of narcissists. We won't embarrass us ourselves, ourselves. for views. But like they do not. That is the that, worst thing yeah. for Gen Z. They, they cannot. No. They cannot. They will do stuff for views, but it's to be part of a community. It's not. They do not want to get canceled. They do that. Like they're so scared of of stepping out of line. And I, I was like, why, why? Are they like this? Like, I get that that's how they are. I get, like, you, you're, you, I don't know, for whatever reason, you grew up this way, but the, as a generation, not all of you, just like not all of us millennials are, are all the same way, not, but 
a lot of you, like, clearly there's, like, this bigger trend happening all over the world of you all acting the same way. Why are you like this? Why are you so self-conscious? Why do you, like, are so, like, collectivist? And then I realized, I think it's because of how we were raised and who raised us. So the boomers made the millennials. The Gen Xers made the Gen Zers. Why is this significant? Because I think there's a correlation between millennials being narcissists with the boomers and Gen Z being collectivists because of Gen X and being like so obedient and so like afraid to step out of line. I guess it would make sense now to describe sort of the properties of each generation then and then compare. Yeah. Because I like, I could imagine a lot of people are like, what the, what are you talking about? Yeah. So we explain Gen Z. Um, I'll explain how. To explain how Gen Xers are, you need to go back even further to their parents, which are the silent generation. Hmm. Um, the silent generation, we're told, well, grew up where you had to be prim and proper. Which era is this? This is right after the GI generation, the greatest generation, um, which was like the World War II generation. Hmm. So after, so this is a timeline. This is like... The Greatest Generation, which was World War Two, and then came the Silent Generation, and then came uh, Baby Boomers, and then came Gen Xers, and then came Millennials, and then came Gen Z. And then Alpha is next. Yes. Um, so it's Silent Generation, Gen Xers made Gen Z. So the Silent Generation were like all about like appearances. They were like, oh, you need to behave. You need to act a certain way. A common phrase is like, um, children are meant to be seen and not heard. So this is how they raised the Gen Xers. Gen Xers. Yeah. Just, so Gen Xers. Explain this parenting method. What do you mean? It's, it's just like basically, um, don't make me look bad. <laughs> Um, it's like you you need to be obedient you need to work hard and like keep your head down so that's kind of what gen xers became they became a new silent generation they actually call gen xers the silent generation as well and i was like oh that's really interesting they're like two silent generations and they made each other basically um so gen xers they are called the silent generation for a reason like we don't hear much about them they don't do anything. They work in corporations, and they just, they, they're the office space dudes. Like, they just, like... Yuppies, yeah. they call them. Um, and those are the parents of Gen Z. And what we realized about Gen Xers, how they raise Gen Z, is that they don't really parent them. They, they kind of just, like, put them in front of an a, a iPad, and they go, like, just, again, don't make me look bad. Like, as... Don't you know make a scene don't clank on your thing like imagine how many times before the tablet you were in a situation where like some young toddler is like has chopsticks or like whatever isn't like drumming Mm -hmm. on a plate like it's like every other sunday where you would go out and eat with your family right Mm -hmm. that never happens anymore it's because the kids are pacified in front of their tablet watching watching all sorts of whatever you know I, I think there's a correlation here where like every the, this particular generation because they're influenced by the previous and then the pre, like their grandparents basically they're all the same they're like Gen Z in a weird way you're being obnoxious and loud but it's for the same reason of wanting to belong wanting community you're not actually going to step out of line because the minute you do you're going to get real can- canceled for what, real for, for real. real for real like yeah it's not that it's like they they want to belong and so just the same exact way gen xers want it to belong in the same way like where they want in, in a weird way is to keep your head down and, and, and t- in order to belong um like there there was i was reading up a little bit about like the characteristics that define certain generations and gen xers are and and the silent generation you can switch out those words and it would be like the same paragraph and then huh. and then you switch out gen x with gen z and it's the same paragraph it's like you, you you guys act the exact same way for the same reasons and the same goes for millennials the greatest generation what is the greatest generation they're world war Two, basically oh. we won the war like our grandparents our grand- basically. yes our forefathers um, 
at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Probably passed away by now. Yeah, most exactly. of them. Um, I think my grandma's still alive. But um, the, the greatest generation, you call yourselves the greatest generation. You're a bunch of fucking narcissists. Um, and who raised another bunch of fucking narcissists, <laughs> baby boomers, who raised us a bunch of narcissists who love attention and... <laughs> Love being on the internet. Yes. Like making all sorts of new nonsense businesses out of yeah. nowhere. Yes. The dot com boom people. Yes, that's that's us. Yes. Yes. So we as much as people shit on us for being narcissists, and you're not wrong, in in order to be the entrepreneurial individuals that that also define millennials, because we are the generation that kind of made Airbnb and Facebook and Instagram and all these like crazy companies like and and we are the generation that most of us were we invented the influencer. Um, it's true. Yeah. yeah, like YouTubers, most of them were millennials. Yeah, it's pretty narcissistic. Though. Yes, <laughs> we invented the influencer. Yeah. Jeez. So like, in order to have the audacity <laughs> to like go out and be an individual, so like to to. To, to really be like, look at me. You kind of have to be a narcissist. Um, so you're not wrong, but like there's there's a good and bad side to, to all these qualities. Like mm-hmm. I feel like Gen Z eventually, like Gen Xers, are going to make great employees. <laughs> they're going to... Work to so run. hard. They're going to work so hard, you know? And they're going to be the mm. cogs in the machines that we made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. That, that we, sipping our tea we, and then they're gonna be complaining about how uh just like the boomers the millennials took all the wealth exactly yeah and bought all the property during, <laughs> yeah, the, the, during the great 2023 depression right and like the like the baby boomers are the same way they always talk about like back in my day things were so great and i can imagine myself in 50 years going back in my day <laughs> yeah. it's so great you got you know um so Millennials are narcissists, but they are also individuals. We do not care for the collective at I all, actually. I hated that shit ever yeah. since I was a kid. I was like, I never wanted to be part of any group. It's no way. portrayed as if we do like that stuff because a lot of people... I, I see a lot of people mistaking Gen Xers and Gen Zs for millennials. And I think, you know what? I, I actually think it might be planned by Gen Xers. What? And Gen Z. Where's the tinfoil hat? What? What are you talking about? I, I threw it away. Oh. <laughs> An eyesore. Because <laughs> I was, I was thinking like, what is this bullshit, weird animosity, like fake animosity between boomers and millennials? Because boomers are like our parents, you know. Like, yes, in a weird way, like they're gonna hate us because we're their dumb kids that are like really, oh, we want to punch you. Um, which, by the way, like I feel like there's a similarity here with the way we were raised. In, in like, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, like we were either beat or we're, like just horribly, like we were punished, okay, yeah. by our parents. <laughs> Gen Z doesn't get punished no. for shit. <laughs> um, and and I I. I just feel like in my older age, I'm moving here. I relate to the boomers a lot. I, I surprisingly, we have a lot in common. We have a lot to talk about. We can relate. We actually can relate to each other. But I have this weird sense that like it's surprising to boomers that they can relate to me, uh, which I assume is because they think I'm Gen Z. They think I'm like some dumb yeah. young person. Yeah, right. but like. Um, I I was wondering, like, we actually have so much in common because whether we like it or not, as much as when we're kids we try to rebel against our parents, we are raised by them, so we have a lot of similarities whether we like it or not. And I go, like, then what were were all those articles in high school and college? Like, of, like, it was always about boomers this, millennials that. Where were Gen Xers? Why weren't they being talked about? I was like, oh, because they're writing the articles. They're being silent. They're being silent because they don't want to be the center of attention. They don't want to be called out. They don't want. They're writing the articles about us shitting on us and boomers because I can't help it, but I have this unexplained like resentment towards Gen Z 
of, of not like how they behave, but it's the reasons behind it. It's the like it's the philosophy. Of yeah, it. I can't, the core of it all. Yeah, I can't get behind this whole like collectivist thing. I never wanted to be part of a group. I'm sure you know the feeling of waking up in the morning, especially if you work in the animation industry, and wondering why. What is the point of it all? <laughs> and then you go and look at your Cintiq and go, no. You know what helps me through the morning? Coffee brand coffee. Coffee brand coffee has made me feel excited in the morning to wake up and dare I say it, I can't believe I'm saying this, wake up and go to work. Cause it's such a great <laughs> kick in the ass, like a real fat kick in the ass. It doesn't give me jitters too. Am I, have I been jittery when I drink no. this stuff? I've actually, I've, I've been actually drinking like two or three cups a day and yes. I just make sure you don't notice. Have I'll, you been noticing? I notice. I hear the coffee machine. I'm working here in the living room all day long and then I hear like a pss of the coffee machine and I go like, it's like 2 p.m. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> so this is our friend Hornering's coffee brand. It's, this is YouTuber merch, but it's genuinely good coffee. Genuinely good coffee. And, and get genuinely good tea, you would say. Yeah, so I don't drink coffee. I drink tea. Uh, and it's actually really, really, really it's strong really and really good. And we have a promo code for you. Go put in Honey and Absinthe, and you'll get 5% off your coffee order. Um, or click the link down below for our referral link. Please and thank you. It helps support this podcast. Thank you. Thank you. And enjoy your enema. Oh, if I would have one suggestion, if I would have one suggestion to Jeremy, what are you doing? Why don't you have a matcha yet? It's like all the rage. Okay, I will. I will buy packs and packs of matcha green tea if you have it. But for now, I will settle on this really damn strong black tea. Enjoy your enema. In the same way, I think Gen Xers and Gen Z really look at our narcissism and our sense of individuality and cringe and go like, what is wrong with you? Sit the fuck down. Like, what, what is going on? Behave. Yeah, behave. And, and we're just like, no. <laughs> like, we just... We're we going to just... keep making these YouTube videos. We're going to keep trying to figure out a new business yeah. or whatever. And I, I think it's simply we just like, we're oil and water. Which makes sense why, like, like Gen Xers just wrote about us all the time. Like, we got on their nerves. I have a sense that boomers, and, like, we have this animosity towards each other, the boomers and millennials, constantly. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like Gen X really babies their generation. Yeah. They're the ones writing all these puff pieces about, oh, yeah, Gen, Gen Z is going to save everybody. Yeah. Gen Z is going to be the generation that solves world hunger yeah, <laughs> like isn't, all I sorts of yeah. ridiculous stuff i doubt it's millennials writing these articles no. like propping up and if you you did how dare you yeah. <laughs> as a millennial traitor traitor! <laughs> traitor um so gen z are essentially self-conscious collectivists they're a bunch of socialists they're, they're like what's really interesting <laughs> literally i'm not talking about like like trying to make it a political thing, but they really enjoy the being in the collective. Yeah. You know, it's like truly what it is. Because like um, McCarthyism happened, I think, I forget if it was the silent generation or if it was um, Gen Xers. I think, I think it was Gen silent. X. I'm not Why sure. Would it, si McCarthyism is During Maca 50s, yes. 50s. Right. Um, uh, late 50s, something like that. So, yeah. Like it's like the opposite, but the same. And it makes sense. McCarthyism is like if you were considered a commie or a red, they're gonna deport your ass, mm -hmm. or you're gonna get blacklisted. Right. So you better sit down. So you better sit down, and shut, shut up. the fuck up, yeah. come back, and like hundred years later, basically. Same thing. If you're a Trump supporter, you're like everyone's gonna hate you in the office. Yeah. They're gonna think you're a misogynist, sexist yeah. person who supports. But if you're whatever. a socialist, if you're with the cause. Oh, come with us, come yeah. with us, power! And, yes, shut up, sit down, agree with us, and you'll be safe. Right. And so I was like, it's the same, it's the same. Your parents, grandparents, we're all the same. We all become our parents, <laughs> unfortunately. And um, that like, as a young person, that phrase would scare the living hell out of me because I'm like, I do not want to be anything like my parents, which is why Gen Z are a bunch of socialists versus like a bunch of McCarthy era, like conformists. Um, and uh, I, I now as I'm getting older, I'm understanding the wisdom in that phrase. It's not like something to fight against. It's like, cause 
you can't fight against it. Like clearly, as much as you fight against it, you just end up like it is what it is. Like, it oh, is we're providing inevitable. no solution no. by the end of this yeah. podcast. We're just kind of sharing our thoughts. It and is insights. inevitable. Yes, because you can assume that like oh. By saying, like, how do you deal with Gen Z? Yes, to get them to shut the fuck up, you just embarrass them. But you're not going to change who they are in the core level. Just like the way you're not going to change that millennials are a bunch of narcissist assholes. Like, we are what we are. Um, that's never going to change. The same way baby boomers have been the same all their lives. Gen Xers have always been like this. You know, unless you, you're, you like, on the cusp, you can be kind of either way. Like, we're, we don't all, again, some of us are traitors. <laughs> it's new ones. Uh, yeah. Yes. But... I don't think people change at the end of the day. Like, I don't think they change the core of who they are. Um, so I think it's inevitable that we become our parents. We are going, millennials are going to become the next baby boomers, old man yelling at sky kind of people. Um, and I, that, that's where it brings me to the title of this podcast, Gen Z are going to become forgotten. Because I don't think they're ever going to find their identity. If you keep searching for, instead of like making your own way, making your own thing, if you keep searching in the past of what you want to be and just copying, there's no innovation. There's no, any, like, and, and sadly, like, I doubt, I really doubt that you will break free from the whole silent generation curse. <laughs> like, I feel like all this, but like, like you said, I think before we started recording, I think it's actually kind of like, good that for whatever reason the simulation designs different generations to be like this yeah it's kind of crazy how black and white it is you have it, yeah. an alternating generation and one's like uh, very you know wants to Go get em. wants to be the main character in the story <laughs> yes. as as the xers like to hate on yes and there are the xer generations who share dna with the silent generation. there's this very passive generation mm -hmm. that kind of makes the world helps the world run and helps, uh, helps the generation before make a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the Xers, you know, like, they, to give them something, there was, like, some punk rock anti-counterculture uh, aspect to every, every generation, I think. But it is called counterculture for a reason. It's, like, a very small group of them are don't don't follow the the general how everyone else is so like um millennials for example or can also be called the entitled generation like there's, there is a big group of us <laughs> who are very entitled and don't want to work for for whatever but the majority of us are narcissists and we are going to do too much <laughs> we're gonna do we're, everything we're gonna do what we want <laughs> yes no matter how it looks yes yeah. exactly um so unfortunately gen z i think my prediction is that you guys are going to become obedient corporatists you're gonna work for the man and you're gonna love it and you're <laughs> never gonna complain because you don't want to get canceled so, and which goes against actually what people are experiencing right now but i think it's, you're gonna grow out of it. I think Gen Z is gonna grow out of this weird peacock phase where they're just trying to impress each other. Um, it's not even really for the gram, uh, and they're they're going to become obedient little cogs in the machine. Um, it is what it is. I think a, a, a small portion of you actually are like the cuffs Gen Zers is what I'm calling them the ones that um are like early Gen Z the one we share a lot of similarities with them because we're like cuss millennials <laughs> we're like the latter half of millennials um they have a lot of millennial quality like I see the millennial qualities start like slowly dropping off as they get younger and younger but then I think Gen Alpha because they're gonna be our kids I think they're going to be exactly like us, but worse. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the approach is interesting because, like, all our parents came here in search of a life better than theirs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you know, whatever situation that was, they believe that America was an improvement. And I feel like a lot, a lot of the millennials are going to are going through this thing of like they're starting to understand like traditional education doesn't seem like it works. Yeah. You know, all this stuff. I'm not really sure if it works. I feel like a lot of our peers, a lot of the people our age are, are raising children that are like probably homeschooled and like you kind of give them everything. You give them music instruments, 
you give them arts and crafts shit you give them like everything because we were told that you need to be the one thing and you need to be you know, work hard and be special and be special in a weird, weird way yeah. but we went through that and we know what the corporate life is like and i think we don't want that for our kids yeah to be yeah. truly special is to like not do that yeah it's still like, yeah and like i think it, like for example if we had kids we would talk all the time like there would be like they they would run around one room there would be arts and crafts and paints one room there would be a library one room there would be like like music instruments oh, yeah. one room yeah just it would just be like that yeah and like we said before that we don't want kids but we have friends who do and they're very similar to us in a lot of ways and i go like our yeah, priorities they're yeah they're they are kind of a lot of them are raising kids as if like the same way i would and truly when i think about the way we would raise kids like for one i would homeschool them because i don't believe in the education system it's basically jail um it's abusive um and then we would also be very like we would be so um, free. And like the one thing I would instill in my children if I were to have them is individuality. I want you to tell me why you are doing something, why you want to do something. Convince me why this is important to you. I'm not going to tell you. I will, I will not impose. I, impose like what I want you to be. Like if you want nothing to, to do with being an artist, you don't want to be creative because we're creative. You want to be a football player? Little, sure, whatever. Go for but it. you damn well be the very oh, yeah. best. We'll whip your ass to yeah. shit. It's that boomer, <laughs> yeah. boomer in us that's gonna like, okay, gonna be like a fucking quarterback. You're gonna be the best. Yeah. Okay. There ever was. If you if you choose that, you're gonna be the best. Um, and I see that in like the few times I have been able to interact with Gen Alpha kids, they're very um. This is amazing to me. They're very smart in ways that, like, I don't know how to describe. They're not like necessarily book smart. That that's a in- worldly is how I yeah. would say. It. Yeah, they know. They know even more how the internet works. Mm-hmm. Um, more so than even Gen Z. Like, they were born out of the womb knowing how to do it, and they're very like they're they're little adults is the best way I can describe it. The way millennials have been raising Gen Alpha, they're like little adults. And I go like, I'm very impressed by them in a scary kind of way, because we won't know. You're gonna rule the world, man. This kid can rule the world. Their future is going to look like when they are adults. And it's like, scary, because we, the sad part is, yes, they they are also going to be a bunch of narcissists. We we will never know the bad things we'll do as well. so yeah that that is the future as i predict it if you think we're full of shit if you think i'm wrong because you're gen z and no you're totally not like that or you're gen x no they're totally not like that or you're millennial no we're not narcissists let me know in the comments don't apologize for your generation just be the difference just Just don't be if you recognize (laughs) the problems and all i ask instead of commenting like oh yeah i agree or whatever just like just don't don't be that fucking guy (laughs) you know yeah. Don't be that fucking guy in the theater, all right? God. <laughs> if if you come across us in the theater, you do that. Oh, oh we're going to turn into boomers. We're going to ooh. I'm going to be the biggest ca- Oh, something that we completely forgot in that section of um how to deal with dumb Gen Z acting a fool. Unfortunately, in this day and age, oh, right. minorities need to speak up. Yes. Because... <laughs> because white people, unfortunately, can't do the thing. Because I really feel like Gen Z will use that against, against them. Yeah. They're going to be like, they're so fucking predictable. They're going to call them, oh, look at this colonizer Karen. Yeah. Telling me to shut the fuck look up in the movie theater. White I wasn't even talking. Yeah. <sighs> and, like... Yeah. So, yeah. like, white people, sorry to... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we... I I and I kind of understand why you can't flip out like I can. Um, but but everybody else who's brown, yes, we gotta we gotta pick I, up the mantle and and just fucking like say this shit because they can't call us colonizers. You know no. they can't call us white supremacists. They like, can you know call I mean? me a Karen, but I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I like you. Also minorities. I have to say, we're really good at roasting people. I know it's like a stereotype, but like, we're, we're really good at like 
embarrassing you okay and like making you be like shut up just you're, you look dumb like without necessarily like losing our shit you know without necessarily like <laughs> pulling a karen and like and like can i talk to your manager um instead i'll we'll call you names uh, yeah i hate and, how racially charged this is but this is the fucking world we live in yes. sadly <laughs> yes. so yeah i am sorry yeah. but i think minorities need to start speaking up because sadly white people can't no. because it's not gonna do it. it's not it's not it's gonna not, solve the problem it's gonna help them win <laughs> yes. it's gonna help the gen z <laughs> They're like, oh, they're going to have like 10,000 uh, views on their TikTok yes. of this. Like, oh, look at this. This Karen. This Karen. This colonizer telling me to shut the fuck yeah. up. This is white. And then all the is. comments are like, oh, what an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, it, like, that's what they want. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's like, bingo. I'm like, <laughs> it's my lucky day. Yeah. Um, what are we recommending? We are recommending the Barbarian Man Rock and Roll. <laughs> How rock and roll is this movie? I really like this horror movie. Um, it is a horror movie, but in my opinion, it's it's an unexpected horror movie. It's not what you think it is if you watch the trailer, um, and it's in my it's not even that scary. It's very tongue in cheek. Um, it depends how weak stomached you are, but um, it's really not that scary. It's not about jump scares for this. Not really. There's some good scares though. Some, but not they're not. Yeah, it's more about like I mean, the one down there. And then um, they go, oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. That was really good. That was a good, that was a good scare. Um, yes. This, you would call a post woke movie. I would call it a post woke movie, man. Yeah. It, it, like, it's referring, I think uh, there's this character, Justin Long. How much do I, should I spoil? But um, they, this literally happens. It's kind of like a very small subplot. It doesn't spoil the movie too much, but. Yeah. Uh, when we are introduced to this character, it's as he's getting canceled and outed through the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, he's getting me too. <laughs> he's getting me too. Um, and there's a not not a lot of like pointed observations, but the fact that we're making these observations and like I, I call them post woke is like like it's not a derogatory word. I would like it's a, it's a new word. I think we, we like you know like I'm going to define for myself right now. I think it's like just some a movie that comes out that doesn't refer to minorities or doesn't like kind of do the whole pandering thing. Yes. That just simply does the movie thing. Yes. <laughs> because how many movies in the past decade did the woke thing? Yeah. These are the movies in contrast. Simply that's why I call them post woke because yes. they truly are post woke. Yes. There's like there's not an ounce of like preachiness of of how you are a bad mm. person because mm -hmm. of your history it's just simply like making an observation right about like humanity how movies should be how, yeah. yes 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 um it's it's interesting it, it includes woke topics but not in ways that you expect with nuance with um pointed observations that aren't so cheap and easy mm. you know and it, it's it's a it's things that like you and I have definitely thought about and definitely voiced, but felt like we couldn't about the Me Too movement and 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 throwing um, typical horror tropes and uh, spinning it on its head. And like, there's moments that are so meta in the script. Um, I won't spoil, but like, it's really like if you are an experienced moviegoer, you'll you'll be like. Are you are you gonna and then they do and then I'm like oh nice mm. um, they like this movie pulls a psycho like half the movie is about something else and then the other half is about something completely else yeah. and then I go like oh neat. Oh, that's neat that's yeah. really hard to do yeah it's really really and hard like to keep someone like your audience is just as interested in the second half of the movie yeah. yeah. It's a really good movie. It's a really good movie. If you're yeah. into movies, something if you're else. into the meta, if, Oof, and, chills. and it's. We're, we're having some kind of like horror renaissance Yeah, right man. Now. What did we say? Horror movies. Yeah, a few years ago. Horror movies. The executives are listening. They're listening. I know you. I, I see you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you. Yes. Um, you're welcome also. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, if you like listening. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, we all have one, one more thing. We just came out with a music video. So I guess we're going to put a link up here or down there. Yes. Check out our music video. It's also on Spotify. The song is called Bottled Up. Yes. We recorded song. it here in Prescott, Arizona. You know, just the two of us. Just the two of us. Listen to our music video and help support our music. Help support Please. art. 
Yes. Period. Um, if you like this episode, check out, like, subscribe. Check out these other other episodes to binge all our other episodes, and we'll see you next time. Bye.